now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, The Man Crisis. Learn why so many men are struggling to find their way in an increasingly gynocentric world in The Man Crisis. Get your copy of The Man Crisis in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. A 17-year-old with disabilities allegedly attacked a paraprofessional after she took his Nintendo Switch. All images in this video are used under fair use of United States copyright law of 1976 and are used in conjunction with my commentary. A 17-year-old special needs student is accused of violently attacking a teacher's aide, pushing her so hard she was knocked unconscious. Yeah, the student at Matanzas High School in Flagler County, who we are not identifying because of his age, allegedly attacked the paraprofessional because she took a Nintendo game away from him. West 2's Claire Metz is live at the sheriff's office, and Claire, the teacher's aide, ended up in the hospital. Right, uh, absolutely. She was very violently attacked, and because she was unconscious, she was certainly rushed there quickly. Now, because of privacy concerns, the school district is not sharing anything about her condition at this point. Now, we do understand there is surveillance inside the school of exactly what happened. It is not being publicly released, but Flagler County's sheriff has seen it. Quite frankly, it was shocking. Investigators say when a teacher's aide at Matanzas High School took a 17-year-old ESE student's video game away, he chased after her into the hallway and, according to the report, pushed the victim so hard it took her off her feet in the air five to six feet, knocking her unconscious. This could have been a homicide. Uh, when you push people down like that, they hit their head. You never know the outcome. Am I going to jail? Yes, you are. For how long? I do not know. I don't make that determination. The 17-year-old, seen here with campus resource deputies, allegedly continued his assault as the teacher's aide lay helpless on the ground. Investigators say surveillance shows the student kicking her, then getting on top of her and punched her in the body and back of the head approximately 15 times. He's six foot seven, 270 pounds, and he's in high school. Okay, that's a big kid. You gonna be cool with Deputy King and I? You. I don't want to go to jail. Well, look at me. Look at me. I have more important places. I, I, to I, I understand. The sheriff says Matanzas has two SRDs at the high school, but it's a big campus, so it took them several minutes to arrive. Fortunately, uh, other students and other faculty members. Uh, administrators came and intervened. The students charged with felony aggravated battery and of course will be subject of school discipline including possible expulsion. As first responders tended to the victim, the 17 year old detained and being walked away, according to the report, he started to spit towards the victim and said when he comes back, he's going to kill her. Mm. Very frightening all around. Now, the district citing confidentiality isn't releasing any information about that 17-year-old student. We do know the victim, the paraprofessional, has been with the school district here in Flagler County since 2004, but only recently became a teacher's aide starting at Matanzas in that position in 2021. We're live in Flagler County, Claire Metz, WESH 2 News. Now, in this incident, which took place in Flagler County, Florida, at Mantazas High School, a 17-year-old who was 6 foot 6 inches tall and 270 pounds allegedly violently attacked a paraprofessional after she took his Nintendo Switch by shoving her so hard that her body flew into the air and then crashed onto the carpet in the hallway and then after knocking her unconscious he then began punching her in the back of the head 15 times. Now after punching her and kicking her multiple times the student was pulled off the teacher and then was eventually handcuffed and when he was told he was going to jail he basically went fur into a further rage kicking tables and talking about he doesn't want to go to jail throwing a very violent tantrum now the police are seeing this incident as an isolated incident but when i take a critical examination of the behavior of this six foot six 
270 pound 17 year old child with disabilities it fits the pattern and profile for beta males that I talk about in my book the man crisis and it's clear to me that the parents who were raising this teenager with disabilities were not preparing this boy for the world and preparing him to be able to navigate social situations like those of a public school. And they possibly were not looking to teach him about having to submit to authority figures or be able to navigate these situations because they thought he was disabled, but as someone who has grown up living in a home with a disabled family member, I can tell you that it is possible to teach a child with disabilities how to respect authority outside of the home and how to behave in a respectable way when they are outside of the home. These are things that can be taught to a child with disabilities and things that can be taught to that child, but a mother has to go out here and stop feeling ashamed or feeling like they have to go out of their way to give this child a pass because children with disabilities have to know what the boundaries are as related to the real world because if they have to enter into environments like going to a school or going possibly to work or possibly going to programs, they have to understand that they have to follow the rules of those places and they also have to understand that there are boundaries set for their behavior. Unfortunately, what I have seen from a lot of parents as related to disabled children is that a lot of parents look to give these children a pass, believing that these children cannot really learn that much, and what they do is underestimate this child's ability to control themselves, and because they want to not have to deal with this child's what they consider to be out of control behavior, what they do is go out here and give the child things in order to pacify them. And as they're giving the children things to pacify them, these children turn these things into attachments and instead of them forming connections with their parents and learning how to function in the world or learning how to function in social situations as related to respecting authority figures, what happens is because the children do not bond with their mothers and their fathers, what happens is the children start bonding with these devices or toys like attachments and as they're bonding with these toys and attachments they take them and, and, and form a connection with them that is hard to sever and that's what possibly happened here at Mantazas High School when this paraprofessional went and took this 17 year old boys Nintendo Switch what happened was was when she took that Nintendo Switch, that, which was his attachment, she wound up severing a bond with that device abruptly with that child. And when you sever a bond with a device that a person has attached themselves to, what happens is that person just explodes in a rage. And when they explode in rage, they aren't. you just don't know what they're capable of doing. And that's what I saw happen at the Mantazas High School hallway in that video, I saw a young male explode in rage about having a, his, his, his bond with this device he had attached himself to get severed. And as that attachment was, was severed, he exploded in rage, attacking the individual who had taken his device and looking to do harm to that person for severing that bond. What people don't understand about a lot of kids today, whether they be disabled or just normal, is that people form extremely strong bonds with devices such as cell phones and um, devices like Nintendo Switches or things like um, these uh, ear, I, I, um, the I, earbuds 
they form bonds with these devices and they there's no telling what they're capable of doing if the, somebody takes that device away from them or something happens to that device. What I've seen in many cases is people basically, when a cell phone falls onto the train tracks, they will dive for that phone because they have formed such an emotional bond to that device. And that's what, and this guy basically formed such a bond with this device that he was willing to storm out of his classroom and shoved this paraprofessional so hard that he basically made her body fly into the air and then she crashed on to the floor on her head unconscious and as after knocking this woman down he was looking to basically take her out and even threatened to kill this woman over this device because the bond with this device was so um, symb symbiotic, like the Venom symbiote, that this child had basically bonded to this device. And again, this is what happens with a lot of beta males because they have never been taught about how to respect authority figures. They have never been taught anything about discipline or self-control. And they have not been able taught how to control themselves in these types of situations because many of the parents again look to give the child the pass because they think that because they're disabled they won't understand but the way you help a child understand is again by setting boundaries for them and that's the sad part here this child never got boundaries set for him and because he didn't get boundaries set for him he crossed the line by by attacking this paraprofessional and basically brutalizing her to the point where she was knocked unconscious and was just going on this rampage. Now this boy, as I see it, was basically, I think, spoiled by his parents because after he was handcuffed and the police asked him if he was going to jail, he told the police, I don't want to go to jail because I have more important places to be. But the whole thing was, he was not taught any sort of discipline, any sort of structure, any sort of self-control. And many people make the excuse and say, oh, a disabled person can't learn these things, but this boy possibly will be forced to learn these things when he enters into the juvenile criminal justice system because even though he's disabled, he is going to be processed in that system and when he's in that system, he is possibly going to have to deal with the COs telling him what to do. He's going to have to deal with these um, inmates telling him what to do, like Bubba, Tiny, Roscoe, and Big Dave. And this boy, I mean, he may be disabled, but he will be dealing with structure and he will be dealing with order inside of that system. And if he doesn't know how to deal with structure and order, a lot, sadly, a lot of those people inside of that criminal justice system, they are not going to be as patient or compassionate as his parents or any of those teachers or individuals in that school system. And this is the thing that this boy doesn't, didn't understand, but he will now be getting a hard lesson in it. And he could have sadly possibly could have killed this woman because of himself being out of control. And again, that is the scariest part of this whole story. This boy could have possibly killed this teacher over this Nintendo Switch, a device that basically every child just knows how to just put it away until there was a free period for them to go out here and play it. Now, when I was a kid back in the 80s, we used to have a lot of teachers get on us about our Walkman, and they would be like, you can't have your Walkman in class. And a lot of us understood that, yes, we could have our Walkman on campus, but we would wait until we got our lunch period, or we would get on the train to listen to our Walkman. We understood that there were boundaries in school we needed to respect, and we needed to respect those boundaries if we wanted to keep our devices, because um, the whole thing is in order to keep your device, you have to maintain discipline and self-control. And while the, this child had some disabilities, 
he could still learn how to be disciplined and self-controlled, but the whole thing was the parents gave him a pass and that pass led to this teenage boy sadly winding up on the road to becoming a man in crisis because at 17 years old, he's basically skirting the line as related to the juvenile justice system. And if his parents don't do something right now, he's going to go from assaulting a teacher to assaulting adults. And if he's out here assaulting adults, it's going to end one of two ways. One, it may possibly end with him running up into getting arrested by these police out here and two it could end up with him dead because somebody is not going to be as compassionate as the people in that school who are thinking about expelling him no if he runs up in the street on some dudes and gets into it with them and there's nobody there to be a guardian over him this poor teenage boy with disabilities will become another dead kid because what's going to happen is he's going to run into somebody who may possibly have a firearm or another weapon and they're not going to they're not going to be worried about him being disabled they're going to be thinking about their life and that's the whole situation that is very dangerous for this young man who is a man in crisis and many of the parents the teachers and people are not thinking about the future for this boy because if he runs into law enforcement and just tries to charge them like that the chances are he may wind up also dead as well because they're gonna say he was resisting arrest and this boy needs an intervention because he's on the road to becoming a man in crisis and he's all well on the road to becoming an even bigger tragedy than what has been presented here with the violent and brutal beating that this teacher received. I mean, if nobody gives this 17-year-old an intervention, we're going. I, I, I fear that I may be doing another man crisis video on him sooner rather than later. Now, if you want to learn what leads to males like this participating in these spectrum of violent behaviors, you can pick up my book, The Man Crisis, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find The Man Crisis at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBook Store, and Google Play. And if you want to see me make more videos like this on men's issues, you can send a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App. And if I know something about that subject, I will make that video for you. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback. From the author of the critically acclaimed book, The Man Crisis, comes The Woman Crisis. Learn why so many women have become lost in their quest to have it all in The Woman Crisis. Get your copy of The Woman Crisis in paperback at Amazon.com and online booksellers today.